Alert, this is Hero. Welcome back to my Dark Souls 2 beta footage. Now in the last episode we we had a little bit of a talk about, well I talked at you about my experiences with the game thus far. And so far I talked about a little bit about the magic and about how amber herbs might change how we view using magic in Dark Souls because in Dark Souls it was a bit of a, a bit of a like, you know, you get so many casts for each time you rested a bonfire and that is it you know you don't get any replenishing items you don't have any the only way you can get more casts for a spell is to equip something like the the dusk crown ring to get more casts just like that but in dark souls 2 you actually have something like an amber herb which i'm assuming there's going to be a stronger version of it as well this is a bit like fresh spice and you're going to be able to replenish your your casts, which is it's a big step forward because I'm sure sorcerers were getting kind of frustrated with how they had to deal with the game. Like they were really only spell swords anyway because they couldn't use magic for absolutely everything. Because unless you really took advantage of things like the red tear stone ring, soul arrows just weren't just aren't able to one shot anything unless you're at 50 intelligence with a uh with a with a crystal shit, what's it called the tin crystallization catalyst and did you see right then i dropped off the edge to uh drop attack that one enemy with the dagger and it flattened him which is interesting to say the least it's um means that even small weapons can flatten enemies when you do the dropping attack and another interesting thing which you'll see later but right now hold on you can see this, just me climbing up the ladder real fast. To do that, you just hold the circle button, or B, I assume, when it, can, when it comes to the Xbox. And you'll just climb up the ladder really, really fast. Which is excellent, because if there's one thing that you'll, like, if you play Demon Souls, you will wish that there was even an option to slide down in that game, because climbing up ladders in Demon Souls was hell. Getting the brushwood set of armor down at the bottom of execution of Meralda's pit was hell not because of you know walking on the really thin beams or anything but because of those fucking ladders anyway just poking around this corner right here so I can see that there is a, an enemy right behind there so I choose the soul greatsword which hits through walls and I go for the r2 heavy attack I block a quick attack and then I parry the second one and now this is a it's a cool repost animation but I, I really wish that the camera didn't uh, zoom in the way it did and I also wish the enemies remained standing as well. And what I just picked up there was the Ring of War which if I remember correctly because I don't think I go and actually check the description for quite a while in this test uh, it does I think it's like the Ring of Steel protection in that it gives you like an extra 50 points of physical protection which is good. It's great that they included this. Uh, they included it in this beta because I don't think everyone wanted to level up resistance to get their to get their defense higher. Basically, even though some people did. And holy shit, is resistance overpowered in the in the beta at least? Because if you go onto YouTube, if you hit the search bar and you search "resist the world." Dark Souls 2 beta or something like that, you'll see a guy that basically only leveled up resistance for the entire way and the results are amazing because it basically it it boosts his his defense so high that enemies basically only tickle him when they attack him. Big ones, like the big enemies when they attack him, it still hurts but not nearly as much as it does when some of the big enemies hit me in this throughout this game. So if you if you're also looking for like another stat to invest in when you start playing Dark Souls 2, I'd probably look into resistance, although I think at the rate that it was going in that video, I don't think that they're going to keep it the same way. And if you look at this right now, I'm locked on and I can actually run around, like not just strafe to the left and to the right at a walking speed, but if I hold the run button and I run to the left or the right, then the character stops strafing 
and runs to the left or to the right, or you can run backwards or in circles. It just completely removes that that strafing element, which a lot of people probably ask for because they don't like moving to the left or to the right and being restricted to just that walking speed. So you've got a lot more control over yourself, like in general while you're in combat, but it's it's also because your character kind of feels a little bit like he's walking on ice sometimes, especially when you're going into or coming out of a run, you can tend to slide around a bit. And um, if you were part of the whole Dark Souls 2, you know, investigation sort of, you know, click thing that, you know, went around and looked at, you know, basically everything that anybody could ever put up on the internet about this beta, you'll know that... A lot of people complained that it felt really, really loose, and I wouldn't disagree. It's just um, I don't think people make I don't think it's as terrible as people make it out to be because I mean I spent a lot of time with Dark Souls, especially I mean I spent about a hundred times a uh, hundred hours with Demon Souls and maybe uh, fifteen hundred hours with Dark Souls which is a crazy amount of time, it's the most I've ever played a game, and I think the controls are different, it feels a, a lot different, but none of it's for particularly the worst, I don't think. I think I think any of the problems that we're having at the moment with like uh, just general ability to control the character, I think that is going to be ironed out in the final you know, in the final cut of the game, the the thing that comes out in March. I think it's going to feel a bit tighter, and I think some of the bugs are going to be ironed out. Hopefully some of the animations for, like, the gestures and stuff are going to be rehashed a bit because they look terrible. Um, but, you know, it's not all fire and brimstone like some uploaders would have you believe. And, I mean, I think just, just as many people that say that you know, the, the new beta is going to be terrible, sorry, the new game is going to be terrible just because of these things like the, the controls that we've seen in the beta, that kind of a thing. There's just as many people who would have thought, who would have said that, you know, it's going to be fine, you've got nothing to worry about. But on the point of controls, I, later on, I, I managed to pick up a, well, a sort of a, a player favorite, the Zweihander, um, from just off to my left, like, uh, back back across the bridge, and just off to my left, there's a little ambush and a little shiny, and the shiny is the Zweihander, which requires 17 strength and no less, because in the beta, the uh, the the one point five times strength modifier for two handing something didn't really seem to be a thing. Like, if you had, you know, 14 strength and you tried to Two hand to wield this Vihander, it just didn't work. So, if you want to wield something in this beta, you've got to have exactly the strength requirement that it wants you to, that it says you can have. But to compensate, the Zweihander had a strength requirement of 17 rather than 24. So, people were given a realistic opportunity to level up their strength enough to use it, which I did. And getting back to the control thing, the controlling the Zweihander in this game is different to controlling it in Dark Souls. It's quite... It's a bit... Um, it's very loose. And I, I know it, it's, it's not actually very loose, but it feels loose because you're used to the game doing most of that lock-on. You know, if you put out... If you throw out an attack, if you hit that R1 button, you expect your attack to sort of... to What do, what do they call that? They... To, to chase the enemy with your lock-on, and it kind of does that at the start of your animation in this game, but you also have this really, really big ability to be able to, like, move your analog stick in another direction while locked on and change the direction of your attack. So if you're like me at all when you're fighting in the game and, you know, uh, in your... In Dark Souls, if you throw it as Vihander hit, and you kind of just instinctively move the control, like the the analog stick, back to then you know do another attack that way, then 
in this game, you're probably going to end up launching your first attack the way that you move your analog stick backwards. So you may just end up completely missing the enemy that you thought you were going to hit in the first place. And this is a completely new enemy. This is one of the one of the elites, one of the big guys of the beta. He, he's a he's a big you know, uh, pole arm wielding guy, and he's got some really devastating combos. He's got a three hit combo, and he's got a kick. Sorry if you heard that, that was um, something in the house just fell down and I think it's okay. I don't know, I didn't really go out and check, but I think it's okay. And so, oh yeah, I just ran away and I used the, the bell shield to actually heal myself, which it, it was it was cool because I, I thought, well, I could use my Estus, but you know, I'm only just starting to get into a new area. You know, what do I, what do I do? Do I, do I use my Estus and risk you know, maybe not having any on the boss or you know, what do I do? And then I realized that I had the bell in my second hand you know, uh, shield slot, so I went to go and uh, get that on, and I actually used the heal spell from the shield, which was... It surprised me how useful it was and how quick it was, actually. If you just run away and then use it, it's pretty damn quick. I mean, I don't think you'd be able to use it running from people, like running from another player, but it is a good... It's a good backup plan, I think. And this guy, this guy is really chasing me at the moment, and I love this, that they're not leaving you, they're not leaving me alone at all. And what I had to do then, he, he chased me right back to the bonfire, and what I had to do was end up, you know, just cheesing him from behind the wall with the Soul Greatsword. And also, I just have to say this, the Soul Greatsword is an amazing spell. It's like... If you ever ran a sorcerer character in Dark Souls, you've been sort of praying for a melee range spell, and that is exactly what Soul Greatsword is. It is, it has good range, it has extremely good damage, and you don't have, you don't have like one or two casts of it. You have about four, and I'm sure you'll be able to get more than one uh, achievement of it in the game, hopefully anyway, because four doesn't seem like a whole lot, but. I'm, ima I'm imagining that you could get some pretty devastating damage on that Soul Greatsword, and it would do... And it covers such a wide area as well, it's got such good reach. And it goes through walls as well, so you could get some get into some interesting situations where maybe you're an invading phantom, and the host's got you know, two phantoms with them, and you manage to hide around a wall and they don't quite know where you are. So then you can just hit them right with a couple of um, Soul Greatswords through the wall. A really heavily charged one too. By the time they hear the sound of that Soul Greatsword charging up, you've already hit them. And what I've been doing for the past, uh, I don't know, four or five minutes, is really just farming some souls, sort of doing a little bit of exploring. And look, my 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 forward R2 attack then just knocked the enemy onto their ass. And that that step forward and then like hit them in the face with the sword attack that I just did, that did no damage. That is the replacement of the kick in this game. It is a, um, it's more like a shove, like a Demon Souls shove, except much slower. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of it yet, but I do hear that it can do some interesting things in PvP. Anyway, the, oh, what was I talking about? I was trying to get some souls uh, from the enemies around to be able to wield the longsword because the dagger just wasn't cutting it, even though the critical was nice. And, oh, these guys, these guys are mean. Oh, they look mean, they're not very mean in practice, because you can backstab them, and, you know, if you can control how many of these things you fight at once, then if you can backstab them, then they're pretty much going to die, because they're too big, they're too slow to avoid getting backstabbed by something that's just, that's as fast as the player character. They just, they can't afford it. They, they, they look, they look really menacing. I love how they look, and I love how the enemies look when they die, the big ones, how they just sort of fade out of existence with that red particle effect, and I'm sure, I don't know if uh, Justin likes that or not, but I really do. I actually like the player death animation as well, which is like a, it's sort of the same sort of thing, the player character falls over and then explodes into a cloud of green particles, I really like that as well. So, now I'm heading back towards the area with that really fast elite guy and the few little zombies on the ground. And with my new longsword this time, so I should hopefully be able to take care of them better with this because it has more range, it has uh, more combo ability, and 
it generally just hits but hits hits much harder sorry than a than a dagger would and you may or may not notice it but when an enemy breaks your guard like he just broke mine then your character kind of stumbles back a fair bit and it's it's more than a fair bit it's it's a really exaggerated version of the the guard break animation in dark souls it's I'm not the biggest fan of it because most of the animations in this seem to be a bit exaggerated all the time, but it's 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 a bit it's a bit troublesome because it it lasts a long time and it, it really does make you think about who you know uh, who is going to have enough time to attack you in that span because the enemies definitely do get a lot more damage in that short amount of time. Anyway. We're getting to the end of the episode. I'm sorry that we didn't get much done here besides farm some souls and get a new weapon to use. But I will see you in the next one, which is bound to be much, much more exciting.